What's up guys? Today we're going to take a look at how I test and maintain the nutrient levels in the ELOS 120. First off, let's get something straight. I hate testing. I hated testing in school, and I still hate testing my tank. I hate going to the doctor for tests, and if my driver's ed teacher didn't accept bribes, I wouldn't have a license. But if you're a reefer, then it is a necessary evil. So if you're going to hold a gun to my tank and force me to test, then I think it's important to have a test that is accurate enough to be worth the trouble. So Elo sent over a few kits for me to try out while doing this build, and I figured that why not? After all, what is so special about a test kit? I think that question really starts with NIST. So NIST is a National Institute of Standards and Technology. They're a unit of the US Commerce Department, and they were formerly known as the National Bureau of Standards. NIST promotes and maintains measurement standards. It also has active programs for encouraging and assisting industry and science to develop and use these standards. This means that if your kits are NIST certified, that if you add parts A to parts B correctly, then the resulting measurement should always be at a certain level of accuracy. To claim NIST certification, your kit must also be validated against NIST certified samples. This means that test kits have to ship and store in a certain way to ensure that accuracy. And for every batch that you create, they have to be certified against those samples. This is great. But what does that mean to me, a guy who hates testing and struggles to walk and chew bubblegum at the same time? Well, it means that if I'm going to be forced to test my reef to succeed, then I want to use a test kit that will produce reliable results every time as long as I take my time and do it with a safe place away from things that might threaten me with bodily harm, like children or my wife. One of the first things that you notice about the ELOS test kits are that they are all well packaged and each kit comes complete with everything you need to perform a certain test. I like the fact that while I am not colorblind, my wife would beg to differ, ELOS went through a lot of work to provide tests and color charts that result in fairly obvious color changes that make things a bit easier to know when to stop a certain titration for a test. I won't bore you with performing each test but I can tell you that compared to other test kits, some of the ELOS kits had a few extra steps involved. At first, I was really annoyed. But then I realized that in order to achieve accurate results, ELOS chose not to make any shortcuts with pre-mixed chemicals, which might deteriorate over time. If you guys can remember chemistry class, then you know that the most accurate tests are performed when each component is done in sequence and separate. I didn't know that because I slept through most of chemistry and cheated off Jose Ramirez. But one of the reasons I chose now to do these tests was because finally after some heavy feeding and while the tank was maturing, I started to get some of those dreaded diatoms on my sand bed and my glass needed a bit more cleaning than normal. When compared to my Red Sea test kits, I found that while the ELOS kits took a little longer for some tests, the accuracy was better and the colors were easier to distinguish. I think it's important to have a few test kits on hand to cross check numbers when you see a problem or the start of a problem. In my case, the ELOS test kits confirmed that my nitrates were higher than I like and my phosphates were also creeping up. My Red Sea test kits confirmed the same thing. But while I had solid numbers using the ELOS test kit, I found myself asking a second opinion from the reef wife. Without telling her what I thought the numbers were, she came to different conclusions than I did with the Red Sea kit but not with the ELOS kit. All in all, I think for the time being, I will stick with the ELOS test kits for the trickier tests like nitrate, phosphate, and nitrite. Now came the question of how to fix these problems. For this, I turned to Marine Pure Ceramic Media. Many of you know about Marine Pure Media, but here are the cliff notes. It's a big block with tons of pores that once colonized with critters you can't see, performs the same function as live rock. The trade-off is that per square inch, it's more effective than live rock as a bacteria colonizes the surface and interior of the rock, and not just the surface as most live rock available today are capable of. 
A single block of marine pure media can perform the filtering capacity of a lot of live rock. This is important to those of you adopting bonsai or bare bottom tanks that lack the added surface area that more live rock and sand could supplement. Marine Pure comes in a variety of shapes, sizes, and densities, and are easy to cut and shape. I personally decided to use a combination of the blocks, plates, and balls to assist me with lowering the nutrient levels. Since Marine Pure is only as effective as the bacteria it's seeded with, I decided to pre-seed the Marine Pure blocks in a vat of clean, eight-month-old live rock that gets regular additions of nitrifying bacteria. Overall, once seeded for about two weeks in the vat, it took an additional two weeks before I started really seeing the effects of adding the marine pure to my tank. While the diatoms have not all disappeared, my nitrates have dropped considerably, and combined with my regular water changes, it has been a real difference in my aquarium. Many of you remembered that I successfully ran an entire SPS frag system with nothing but marine pure media and a skimmer with excellent success. I will drop regular updates of the media's performance in future videos. But with that said, I think this is a good time to wrap this video up. My final thoughts on the ELOS test kits are that they seem affordable, dependable, and easy to use. While some tests involve extra steps, this is done to ensure accurate and consistent results. As for the Marine Pure Media, I am a believer, especially after using it in two tanks now. I believe that it is a vital component of my filtration scheme for all of my tanks, especially now that I am a proponent of less live rock and more swimming and growing space for my corals and fish. So guys, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that thumbs up. As always, you guys keep doing what you do and I'll catch you all on the flip side.